in this video I'm going to show you how our team Git workflow looks like as well as run through a couple scenarios that we typically will run into in our day-to-day -day, uh, jobs so to give you guys a little bit of context our environment our team uh, uses PHP although the lessons that you'll see in this video will apply to any languages uh, Python .NET Ruby we use github and through github we have git hooks so that when we push to a particular branch those code pushes will then get pushed to the server and we are a five uh, member team so we have three major branches dev QA and master so the dev branch will dev branch basically connected to the development server uh, through the web hooks that I mentioned earlier dev is always going to most likely be broken uh, it is our development playground uh, when developers will push their local code to uh, the server dev is most likely going to be the first server they push to and this is where um, when multiple developers are working on uh, code base that are shared dev is going to be basically be that playground where we uh, push code and merge with other people's code and see how they interact QA is essentially the quality assurance server and this is where once the developers have tested their code on dev uh, especially when they are working with multiple developers and the developers have to share uh, where their code each developer's code is shared among other developers and we need to see how it looks uh, when they interact with each other once it gets past dev it goes to QA where it will then get internally tested by um, other departments and then once it passes the QA phase then the final code is then pushed to master which is which goes to our production server So as an example, um, you'll be working on a, uh, a new feature. So in this new development example, I'm going to demonstrate uh, our workflow in terms of uh, creating a new feature. So right now, I'm on, I'm on the master branch. And the, the rule of thumb is you always merge down from master. And then later, um, I'll showcase that you always want to merge often. So um, in this case, uh, we'll pull from we'll pull from uh, GitHub to make sure that we have the latest code, and then after that, we'll create a uh, a new branch off of master. So that's what I mean by merge down. You always want to merge down from master. Um, so if you're on your feature branch or you're on QA dev, go to the master branch, and then merge down from master get the latest code from master and then merge off of master always merge your feature branch off of master it's very important so oops so I'm gonna call this uh, feature branch something generic like feature branch and then from there so we know that our feature branch has the latest production code and then we can go ahead and start making our our changes so I'm gonna go ahead and and save this so this basically demonstrates I've added some new code um, let's just make sure it sees it perfect um, and I'm just gonna essentially commit obviously the commit messages are, are generic but uh, you know use the best practices of what a good commit message is a good commit message should look like so now that I've commit um, so typically when you're um, you know doing development you're probably gonna get interrupted um, this the snail that all happen pretty often is let's say there's a bug in production and uh, the boss wants you to fix it as soon as possible um, or it's a hot fix and it, it needs to be um, you know it needs to be done now so let's say you're not ready to commit your your feature branch 
into dev just yet, um, but you need to switch tasks to work on the bug fix. So what we'll typically do is, right now it's committed, so it's committed locally, so it's basically uh, save, and we'll switch back to uh, master, and then uh, we'll want to pull, you know, just for uh, sanity checks, but also just so that um, if there's any other developers um, pushing code to production, you want to get that latest uh, that latest uh, code base. So you want to pull down from master, and typically a bug uh, will be reported within GitHub or some sort of issue tracking software. Uh, we typically use GitHub, so GitHub issues, and that issue will typically have like an issue number. So what we'll like to do is uh, we'll create a, a, a new branch, and we will essentially um, put the ticket number uh, within that that branch name. So that way, when we commit, we we don't have to check GitHub to see what that ticket number is. We just look at our branch. So let's say it's um, uh, five twenty, and then the and then like a short description of what the bug is. So let's say it's a login issue, something like that. So now we're in uh, the the, the uh, bug fix branch for 520. Let's uh, just clear that out. All right. So now because master didn't have our you know changes from the the fe feature branch, it just has some stuff from master. So here we'll just say um, I'll just add some code or add some text, but it simulates code. So fix. So let's go ahead and save that. Okay, good. Let's add that. And then what we'll do is um, we'll typically tag. Well, we always tag the uh, the GitHub issue number. And that way, within the um, the bug tracker, you can see the code commits um, when you do it this way. So something something like that, um, and then let's go back to master, and then we will merge our fixes to master locally, and then we then push to um, if it's a small fix and you are sure that it's going to work you could just push straight to production else if it's something a little bit more complex and you need somebody to test it like the QA uh, department or your fixes are um, half the code base and then another developers you know fixing the other part of the code base then you want to push to QA test it out see if it's good and then um, push the to master, we typically for bug fixes will not push the dev as an experiment, um, just because dev is always gonna have uh, new development code. Uh, dev is not guaranteed to always be working, so uh, we typically will just you know push to QA, test it there, and then if it's good on QA, then we push our changes to production. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do git push origin master, which is basically pushing to our production. So in this event, uh, we just finished the 520 issue. And let's take a look at our branches. So here we could just go ahead and then we could essentially delete our branch. So git branch D. Okay, so now that we uh, did that quick bug fix, we're ready to go back to our feature branch uh, and to work on that new feature. So let's go ahead and uh, so now we're back on our feature branch, and this is where um, the part where I say always merge often. Uh, comes into play. Uh, so let's say you're working on the feature branch for a couple of days now. You don't want the feature branch to get too stale from master, which is the production. 
what what can happen is that if you're coding alone on an island uh, and you, you merged from master like you know four weeks ago or, or, or so forth obviously since four weeks a lot of uh, coach has changed in in production you don't want to run into a situation where you're ready to uh, push the production obviously you'll probably push the QA first for if it's a code base that's um, you've been working on for four weeks but uh, you don't want to get to a situation where your branch is so far off off tangent that when you're ready to merge back to the master branch or QA branch that you're going to pull in uh, a bunch of code so that so that uh, you'll run into a bunch of merge conf conflicts uh, because then it's going to be hard to you know go through and and work through all the the merge uh, conflicts that occur if you merge often what will happen is that you will essentially uh, you may run into more merge conflicts but there'll be bite-sized chunks as you merge I always merge each day so I'll deal I'll deal with per perhaps merge conflicts daily but they're small they're, they're bite-sized chunks versus run into a huge merge conflict way later on like four weeks worth and, and have to you know deal with that um, it, it'll be much harder uh, to kind of go through and fix all the merge conflicts so always merge often and always merge down so I'm gonna simulate uh, merging often right now so right right here I'm just gonna pull from origin master so basically pulling from production code and, and merging right now um, so let's just close this right now so right now we have our original uh, code changes from the feature branch but we don't have the bug fixes so once I do a git pull origin master there's already a, a merge conflict now it's it's smaller so that's okay so here we have to decide you know what what to keep so So that's how we'll do it. Deal with the merge conflict. Conflict. Okay. And we'll continue adding more uh, changes. So we're we'll continue working on a new feature. Uh, working on a new feature. And what will happen is, so let's say, um, let's say it's the end of day. So we call this the EOD push. Um, so you, you've made some changes. Um, a lot of us are working on laptops. Um, you know, laptops could get lost, or you know, they're maybe more prone to getting damaged. Um, we don't like the idea of you know having code that's only local uh, so you're working on code for like four weeks now but it's only on your local machine um, that's kind of risky so what we do is at the end of the day we'll push the dev and that's why I mentioned the dev will uh, most likely have broken code because it'll be code that's it's just not complete um, so essentially the dev really acts like our backup server or like our backup um, the advantage with that as well is that if you're working on something and at the end of the day you push, let's say um, you're sick the next day um, and couldn't access your computer or you're just totally not working, because your code has been pushed to dev, somebody can at least um, pull down from dev or at least look at GitHub and see what you've done yesterday uh, and, and continue on. So. Uh, the point is is that we will push to github uh, we will push to the dev branch basically daily and dev and that's the reason why dev will most likely not be working completely and always will contain broken code so here uh, we'll just simulate um, pushing to uh, dev um, via the EOD, EOD um, method so let's see what we have 
go ahead and uh, save our changes. Yeah, we don't really do EOD. We basically will just uh, commit something that we we actually finish. So um, EOD, and then okay. Um, and uh, in general, there is no hard set rule for EOD pushes. Um, you know, if you're working working on a feature that's maybe just going to take a day or two. Um, and you know it's only going to take a day or two, then you don't have to do an EOD. EOD is going to be basically more than a uh, three-day type of uh, feature, um, or it's complex code that you kind of don't want to go through the process again if you did lose it somehow. So in any case, um, so so now we're ready for QA. So let's go ahead and check out the QA and we'll pull from QA to make sure we have the latest QA code. It looks like we are all set. So let's take a look what QA code looks like. So some stuff in QA. Great. Um, so now we're ready to merge our feature branch that we've been working with into QA and then we'll be pushing our code to QA so that it could be tested by uh, a different department or by a larger, um, by other people on the team. We'll deal with the merge conflict. So in this case, we're just not going to keep the QA code. Good. And typically, there won't be as many merge conflicts. I think how I set up this demo um, I kind of set it up kind of weird, so it's it's dealing with merge conflict every time we change a branch from you know dev master and QA. Um, typically, we don't really run into merge issues unless two developers are working exactly in the same uh, page, same uh, code base, exactly the same code base. Um, but, anyways, uh, so let's let's. Uh, so essentially, I'm simulating that. Okay, so it, it's good. It works on QA. Uh, we just merged the feature branch into QA. It's been tested. It's good. So now it's ready for production. So what we'll do now is essentially we will check out to master. Again, let's pull pull down the latest code from master. It looks like we're up to date. And now we'll merge our feature branch into master. Good. And then, um, you know, obviously we'll test it locally. It looks good. Okay, now we're really pushed to um, into the production server. So now our feature branch, or the the code that's in feature branch, is now part. It's it's merged into production, and we just pushed it to GitHub, which then takes that code and then pushes it to our servers. And then we can now delete our feature branch. And essentially that's how 99.9% .9 of our workflow looks like. Um, you know, always working on some new enhancements to the uh, code base and oftentimes we'll get interrupted so we're gonna have to shift gear so we'll uh, commit the changes locally um, and then we'll sw switch gears, um, go back to master, pull down the latest code uh, create a new feature branch off of master and then um, put in the hot fixes once that's good um, locally uh, you either push it to QA for further testing or you push it back to production and then we would then switch gears again uh, back to our feature branch and then um, you know if the if the feature has been um, 
taking a couple days. Uh, always merge often, so just merge the master code, or master uh, production code origin uh, to your feature branch uh, and deal with the merge conflicts in bite-sized chunks. And then um, it's up to your discretion if you want to push it to dev as an EOD process. Um, and then when you're done with the feature, then uh, you push the QA for testing, um, for further testing if needed, or you push straight to, to master um, if it's a, a small bug fix or a small feature. And that's essentially it. Um, in terms of um, issues, we will tag with an issue number, and that way it gets um, whatever, when the code gets pushed to to GitHub or um, whatever your version control system is, and depending on how that stuff works, um, it will tag your code pushes with the issue number, and you can see you know, the issue being opened up, and then the code that will resolve that issue. And that's essentially it.